In this video, I'm going to rank every Legend Ultimate in the game from S to D tier in Season 18. And I'm going to structure this in the way you see the Legends when you play Apex. Starting with Bangalore, I'm going to give her Ultimate A tier. Bangalore's ult is really good at buying yourself time if you need to stall. And it's also really good on third parties just for creating a lot of chaos and you might even knock a couple people. It covers such a wide area too to the point where when you're in end rings, so like ring 4 and 5, her ultimate is basically unavoidable. I don't know the exact number on how long you get stunned, but you get stunned for around like 7 seconds it feels like. And if you get stunned, you are pretty much dead almost every time if the team capitalizes off of it. It's a solid ult that's hard to avoid, covers a large area, does damage, and stuns you. You pretty much cannot go wrong with a Bangalore ult. Next up we have Fuse, who I believe has another A tier ultimate. If used in the right situations, that is almost a guaranteed squad wipe purely because if they try to leave the ring, they're going to get hit for like 60 damage, while also being slowed at the same time. The downsides to his ultimate are that movement characters can kind of get out of it, and it feels very janky at times, where if you shoot it on buildings, sometimes the ring won't even show up in certain spots. So it definitely can work weird, but when people are stuck inside of it, it's very hard to see out of it, and then you also get wall hacks seen into it. I think we all know an Apex visual clutter is a very annoying thing, and being stuck inside of the Ring of Fire is basically just a mass of visual clutter. The ult can also be used from insanely far away outside, and it can be used inside to block doors. I think the ultimate's very flexible, and something that's really undervalued is the fact that it's basically a built-in scope if you pull it out. With a fuse ult in your hand, you can zoom in super far. As long as the team comp doesn't have a horizon, which unfortunately is probably the most played legend at this point in the game, there's pretty much no way to escape it if it's placed well. So I feel comfortable giving Fusel A tier. Next we have Ash's ultimate which I am going to give a B tier. Now it's weird giving Ash ultimate B tier because by design it is actually a really good ultimate but I think it just needs a couple of changes to make it actually up there with the A and S tiers. Like giving the portal a little more distance I think would be a big game changer alone. The ultimate is really good in terms of trying to capitalize on things very fast or if you're in a bad situation you have a get out of jail free card in a way. It allows either Ash herself or her whole team to take off angles if they choose and Ash can also play off on her own solo and use her portal to get back to her team if needed. It definitely has its moments where it shines. I think the thing that holds it back the most is the fact that enemies can take it which is probably a good thing they can or it would be too strong. But also I just feel like it doesn't go far enough and it's also only a one-way portal. I think if Respawn gave the Ash portal maybe 25 more meters, I would consider giving it an A tier. But for now, I'm fine with putting Ash portal in B. It's not an insane ultimate, but it definitely has its scenarios where it's really good. Next, we have Mad Maggie, whose ultimate I am going to give a B. I think the ultimate's actually pretty solid, but the reason why I'm giving it a B is because it feels very unpredictable, and I would even say kind of meta-based. If Gibby were meta, it would probably be an S tier. Maggie's Wrecking Ball is really good at closing small gaps with the speed boost you can get off the little pads that drop behind the ball, and it gives the people you're pushing something else they have to worry about because you don't want to get hit by it. It can definitely win you fights, especially when it hits more than one person, but I think with how unpredictable the ball feels, it's very rare that you ever hit more than one person with it. The ball may even end up blowing up on you or your teammates. So overall, I still think it's a good ult. If you play Mad Maggie, I don't think you're going to be complaining of the way it works. This could just be lack of experience on my end, but I just feel like the unpredictable nature of the ball makes it hard for me to give it above B. Now our last character in the assault category, Ballistic, I am going to finish off with another B. I think in previous tier lists in the past, I've really kind of undersold Ballistic on his ultimate. But now that I've played around one a little more, that reload speed that you get alone in his ult is actually pretty insane. And throwing in a gun like a Havoc or Devotion in my opinion in the sling can be a game changer. I don't think the infinite ammo is much of a game changer considering how much you normally find when you kill someone anyways. But from a purely fighting team perspective, he actually is kind of nice to have on a team. I want it to be more fair to Ballistic in this tier list because I genuinely do see a little better that his ult can be a game changer. But the reason why I'm keeping him in B towards the middle of the pack is I still feel like in terms of fighting ultimates, they're still better. Moving on to the skirmisher category though, starting with Pathfinder, who I am giving a C tier for his ultimate. And let me explain why. The way I view the game is, the ultimates that give you value mid-fight are the ultimates that are best in the game currently. And really the only reason why Pathfinder's ultimate would give you value mid-fight would be to get your whole team up to a height, but right now Horizon just does that but better. 
his zip lines also fall off late game to the point where there's no point in using a zip line once you make it that far. So they really have no end game value. I'm not giving him D tier because I feel the zip lines still have value early game for fast rotates. But outside of that, I feel like they just fall off too quickly and it's not that hard to kill someone taking a zip line. I'm sorry if I offend any Pathfinder mains with this take here. I'm a big fan of Pathfinder myself, but I just feel like the ultimate's very lackluster. Next for the skirmishers we have Wraith who I am giving an A tier. In terms of ultimates that can get you from one place to another safely, there is nothing that compares to Wraith's portal. Especially after the 75 meter buff she got where she can now go a total of 150 meters, you can get really far with a double weight portal. It's a good safe third party tool or just to use to get loot and go back to your team if you want to. I feel she's on the opposite end of Pathfinder where I think Wraith portal actually gets stronger the further into the game you get. When you're into later games where you don't have a lot of space to move around, Portal lets you check for info and move your team around safely. In terms of ultimates that let you move safely from one point to another, nothing competes with Wraith. Now with Octane, I'm going to keep him kind of simple and just put him in C tier. I think one of the biggest strengths of Octane's pad back in the day was the fact that it made no audio almost every time you took it. It made getting third party by Octane really annoying and that's what made it so good. Not to mention that it also just went further. After them making the pad really loud though and reducing the distance that you get on the pad, it just really doesn't seem to be that good of an ability anymore. But if you are a movement freak of Apex, then Octane Pad is probably going to be way higher in this list. I think if you tap strafe and do stuff like that, the pad may be a little better. But overall, I can't really think of any scenarios where I thought like, man, the jump pad really changed the game for us here. I just don't think it's that good anymore and probably need some buffs. Deciding Revenant's tier was kind of hard for me, to be honest. But after playing the new season for a little bit now, I think his ultimate is probably an A tier ultimate. Every time I fight a good Revenant, I feel like he always has a shield. Him getting his 75 shield back after knocking someone or even just getting an assist is actually really hard to deal with. On top of that, it doesn't even have bleed through. Meaning, if you Kraber a Revenant in his ult, you will only break his ultimate shield and you will do no extra damage at all. Every fight you get into, as long as you have the Revenant ult, you immediately put yourself at a shield advantage. And if you have a white shield, it's like having a red. And I can't even forget the fact that you can't even arc star stick him if he's in his ult. If you're a good Revenant player or facing a good Revenant player, then you notice how hard that ultimate really is to kill. Solid A tier ultimate, really good for people who like fighting. Moving to Horizon, this may be a little bit controversial that I'm not giving it an S tier, but I think Horizon's ult is A tier. Now, the reason why I don't think it's S tier is because I genuinely feel it is not that hard to deal with in most scenarios. I think the reason why people feel Horizon ult is so broken is because they don't play with really good coordinated teams. If I'm right, it only has 175 HP, which is less than one mag in pretty much every gun in the game. So, in theory, it shouldn't be that hard to deal with. Now, the reason why I'm still giving it a really high tier is because it creates a lot of chaos and it makes you have to look at something that isn't an enemy. The way it pairs with the rest of her kit, going up Horizon Lift just to throw your ult at the same time so they have to look at your ult while you're falling on them with a gun, just makes it combo with her and her team very well. If you're stuck inside a building and you're getting pushed, it's not even bad to use just to stall. And if you throw it at somebody who's holding a door, it'll break the door and pull them through it, which pretty much has no counterplay. The reason why I'm giving it A is because it has a lot of niche scenarios where it's very strong, but on the flip side I feel it also has a lot of scenarios where it gets no value. Last for the skirmisher category we have Valkyrie and I am going to give her ultimate also an A tier. A lot of players feel that evac towers have replaced the need for Valkyrie but I personally do not see that at all. If you're someone who constantly rotates with evac towers or balloons then why not run the best version of those which would be Valk. It's way harder to hit a Valkyrie going up in her ult than it is to shoot someone off a balloon. And it's a great tool for almost any scenario, whether you're end game and you're stuck in a bad situation and you can use Valk to get out, or you're early game and want to rotate super fast. I know her passive also works with evac towers and balloons, but I think a lot of people forget just how strong it was to use a Valk ult with your passive at the same time. Getting that high in the sky and getting scans together gives you so much information in the game. I'm giving her A tier because I don't feel evac towers or balloons really replace her at all. Moving on to the recon category, starting with Bloodhound, I am giving Blood B tier. Now, if this was all Bloodhound where you could scan every 6-8 to eight seconds inside your ultimate, this would have been a S tier without a doubt. But now, I feel Bloodhound ult is kind of a glorified passive with basically a 35 second digi on any gun. 
It's a very selfish ult in the sense that unless you have a scan at the same time, it doesn't really do anything for your team. The reason why I feel it's kind of okay right now is because Bangalore, I think, is the most picked character, at least in comp, although I definitely see a lot in pubs and ranked. And if you don't find a Digi for one of your guns, at least you have a Bloodhound ult where you can get essentially a guaranteed one for 35 seconds. So Bloodhound ultimate definitely fits the meta at least, but overall, I feel like the ult fell off after the nerfs to scans. But personally, I feel that was a good thing. Next, with Crypto, I put Crypto in A tier. I know with lists like these, everyone will have their own opinions, but I feel it's hard to argue that Crypto could be anything under A purely because he counters a lot of the abilities in the game. Just alone, his EMP having the ability to break and damage shields is just really strong in itself. Plus, you also get stunned as if you got hit by an Arc Star, which is really annoying. And when you factor in the fact that the controller category for Legends is probably the best category in the game and you kind of need a controller legend per team, there is something for him to EMP on every controller legend in the game. I think he fits well into pretty much every meta that has ever existed and I don't imagine him ever falling out of it either. The only thing holding him back is just he's not fun to play. Now, we all know Seer pretty much fell off the face of the earth in terms of being in the meta, but if you ignore everything about him and look at his ultimate, I think his ultimate's B tier. It still shows you the footsteps of where people are walking around inside his ult, and I don't think we can undervalue how important free info is in a battle royale. I know it's not exactly what it used to be, but still being able to see someone's footsteps and get an idea of where you're going to get peeked from is actually a game changer. I'm giving it B purely because of compared to what it was, it's just not as good. But do I think you're throwing to play Seer still? Not at all. Now our last legend in a recon category, we have Vantage and honestly I gave Vantage all a D tier. The first one of the video. Now personally, I'm someone who actually really enjoys Sniper so when Vantage came out, I tried to run her a lot. And I just really can't see any scenarios where the Sniper makes any difference at all. I feel as if if you want to run a sniper, why not just use a sentinel or a longbow? It does 50 damage the first shot, then 100 the second, implying they're both body shots. But the way I see it, you could do the same with a longbow, you could hit a body and a headshot and do about 170. Vantage ult also has a laser on the gun so people know when you're looking at them with the ult. So pretty much what everyone thought the Kraber should have. I feel the sniper giving away your location just doesn't make sense considering how lackluster overall the ultimate is. There's no point using it up close, which is where a majority of all fights in Apex take place, and it has almost no value at all in endgames. By design, I feel Vantage is a skilled character, and I think it would be nice for Respawn to actually make the sniper better. But for now, I think she has the worst ultimate in the game. Moving on to the support category, starting with Gibraltar, I gave his ult an A. Gibraltar ult is one of the only ults in the game that can actually just straight up kill you if you don't avoid it. It is very strong at controlling space and making a team have to make a play because you threw it at them. It is great for controlling an area, using to third party, trying to move your team forward, or just trying to kill a team with, and even in end games, if there is no one who counters Gibby, your end game ult will pretty much kill everybody. I feel the reason we don't see Gibby now is just because Horizon's in the meta and can avoid the ultimate with a tactical. I feel confident saying if the meta was a little different, I'd have no problems giving Gibby ultimate an S tier. Now with Lifeline, her care package actually has received some pretty solid buffs over the years. But overall, Lifeline just feels like a character who's been neglected for a long time. So I'm giving her C tier on her ultimate. Now I feel Lifeline's package giving you direct upgrades to what your team already has is actually really solid. My thing with her though is most of that loot you probably could have found if you just looted a little longer on your own and it has no value whatsoever when you're in a fight. It's kind of like what I said before, legend ultimates that don't offer you any value in a fight I feel just aren't good. The exception to this rule I would say would be Loba because Loba's ult comes back very fast and you're allowed to steal loot from anything around you. Overall, I think her package is C tier, but that being said, I don't even think it needs a buff, it just doesn't fit that well into how the game plays right now. For our third legend, we have Mirage, and you guys may find me weird, but I think his ultimate's B tier. After playing him myself for a little bit and also running into a few and in ranked in pubs, I genuinely feel like that ultimate's hard to deal with. Especially because I'm convinced that all the audio that the game has went to Mirage's decoys, so you never know where the real one is because you hear a thousand footsteps at the same time. You are also pretty much guaranteed to have your ult every fight because it comes back within 60 seconds. 
Now, Mirage Ult isn't exactly giving you value like a Horizon Ult would, but I still feel like it's not as bad as people think it is. It's definitely a little better than I used to give it credit for. Now onto Loba's Black Market, I'm giving it a B tier purely because, again, it doesn't really do anything in fights, but where it's actually useful, it is very useful. If you land at POIs that don't have much loot or you're a fast rotate team, Loba can literally be the game changer of your team comp. She saves you a lot of time in looting, and if you're someone who likes to play zone early, you can just loot zone instead and sacrifice some of the loot from where you landed at. To me, I would say she basically is a buff to people who like rotating early. Her black market also allowing you to pull infinite ammo means you can poke as much as you want and even try to get red armors. Even though the ult doesn't really have any value mid-fight, I think you could argue that her ult could be A tier. I think it just really depends on the scenario. Now last but not least, this one may come as a shock, but we have Newcastle and I gave his ultimate S tier. I think Newcastle's ult is one of the most underutilized and least understood ultimates in the entire game. It is very versatile and I can't really think of any scenarios where his ult is not going to give you value. It is a piece of cover that once you use it, it is there permanently until you replace it or it gets destroyed. It is like a permanent upgrade to any time you're playing defensively. It can be used to block doorways or walkways. It can be used in end games to make cover out of nothing when there's nowhere else to play. You can use it to jump up to 70 meters to any teammate. So it can be used to go far or take high ground immediately. Remember, this is all my opinion, but I think Newcastle Ultimate is so underutilized in the game right now considering how flexible it is. Moving into the controller legend category, we start with Caustic, and I gave his ultimate a B tier. With the way his gas works now, you can actually use medkits to outheal his gas to you. And I think that is the big setback that keeps Caustic from being a good legend again. The reason why I still think Caustical is decent is because it can be used defensively and offensively, so it has a little bit of flexibility. And realistically, the only solid counter to Caustic is another Caustic. I guess in a way I'm kind of judging Caustic here as a whole because his ult and his gas traps are basically the same thing. His ult is very niche and isn't that strong unless you're inside of a building. Next we have Watson who some people may find this one weird but I gave her gen a S tier. You can find value in Watson's ultimate in almost every scenario in the game. It is also a counter to every projectile in the game which every legend in the game pretty much has some form of a projectile. Just to list a few things, it stops you from getting knuckle clustered, horizon ulted, caustic ulted, bang smokes, spam grenaded, anything like that. It also helps with your shield economy in case you're ever in a scenario where you don't have that many shields. If you are inside small buildings or rooms and you have a gen somewhere it can't be shot, that pretty much completely stops people from using any form of utility to push you. The reason why I'm also giving her S tier is because I feel like the gen has a lot of invisible power. And by that I mean, you could have a gen down and feel like it's not doing anything for you, but a team could have walked by you and saw you had a gen and then just decided not to fight you because they were going to roll up with Horizon Ult and Nade Spam. Just the presence of a gen alone can change how people around you play. I know Watson isn't utilized much in the meta, but I feel her ultimate is a very strong S tier. Next, we have Rampart with her Sheila, which I ended up giving a B tier. Now, in the scenarios that Sheila is useful, like destroying evac towers or destroying doors, catalyst passives, anything like that, it's actually really good. The problem I have with Sheila and not putting her any higher than B is if you ever try to use it to actively fight, you're pretty much going to die every time because you're limited to basically moving like a snail. Rampart Sheila is very niche, but it's also very fun. With how much Catalyst is in the meta, I actually feel like she's decent in the meta as well because she can counter the Catalyst doors. Now although I don't feel her turret is very strong for just straight up fights, if you ever catch someone off guard, it's like a guaranteed kill with how fast Sheila does damage. Now last legend of the entire tier list is Catalyst and I gave her ultimate an S tier which is probably no surprise to anybody. It is an ultimate that does pretty much everything in the game. Catalyst wall can be used offensively, defensively, for rotating, and it stops any form of scan from going through. It is legitimately an ultimate that does everything you want. The only counters to Catalyst wall in the entire game are basically a character who can go over the wall like Horizon, or another Catalyst herself. If you're ever in a bad situation, you can just throw it down because of how fast you get it back. 
and it'll buy you about 30 seconds of time to figure out what you want to do. If you ever make it to final rings in Apex, you can just throw it from one side of the ring to the other, and that also gives you another 30 seconds just to let everyone else fight while you hide on your wall. I probably don't need to explain it too much, but she definitely has one of the most impactful ults in the entire game. And that is the end of my Legend Ultimates tier list. You can comment if you agree or disagree with anything. Remember, all these tier lists are opinion based, so try not to hate me too hard. I rank these ultimates based on my experience playing as or against these legends. But that's all I got. Thank you for watching.